Hey guys, welcome back to the video. Today I'm going to start doing some preparation for the portable generator wiring that I hope to complete tomorrow. So I'm going to get started on setting up this watt meter and the power back. I think I want to use this six inch trough. And then what I want to do is I want to put the watt meter on here and the power back. So if this comes out of the box, these are little current transformers and these current transformers are what allows the watt meters to operate. So the ungrounded conductors from our portable generator that's developing the power pass through here. And these CT probes here measure the amount of wattage going through each leg so that you're able to see how much power your portable generator is actually throwing out. So what I want to do is I want to cut this right in to this trough right here and I could do that once I remove this shield I'm going to attach it I'm gonna drill a hole here and a hole here and this is gonna be right inside the trough so that's what we're doing today uh, then this power back is going to sit on top of that and pass through so this will be out through the top and then you'll be able to turn it on and off from the side right here. So that's what we plan on doing. In the middle here, between 6 and 12. view is horrible here. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. As I'm dry fitting everything here, I thought it would be a good idea to start using some kind of sanding disc here, a flap disc, just to take away those rough edges so nobody gets hurt. So that's what I'm doing. I drilled a 3 16 hole with the drill bit there and then I installed two 632 screws with two 632 nuts and washers to attach it to the cover of the 6x6 trough. So there I'm just using a step bit to make a half inch knockout for this power back device. Normally I use a half inch carbide bit, but I had the, uh, the step bit nearby or the unibit, some people call it. So I use that to make my hole. And I'm also using my 40 volt Makita. Uh, some of you might not realize I have Makita tools also. Not a whole line of, definitely not as much as my Milwaukee stuff. But yes, I have Makita tools too.
Okay, so when you buy these wiring troughs, they come with the ends that you have to assemble yourself. And so I'm just using those clamps to make it easy to attach it with nuts and bolts. Now all I'm looking to do here is just get a rough fit of where I want to install this trough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a knockout. <clears throat> I'm going to mark for a couple of knockouts to bring the generator wiring cable from the junction box there on the left into this trough, and then another knockout that's going to go into the main panel. If you haven't already liked this video, please do that. That helps other people find this type of work in case they're looking to do something like this at their house. That's what this channel is all about. Helping and showing the kind of work that we do in case you don't feel like you want to do it and you want to hire me, you can always contact me. But the main purpose of this channel is to show other people how electrical work is done professionally. So if you like this video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and I thank you sincerely. So this is a Saturday night here, and so I think I worked all day Saturday, and then uh, I decided I might as well try to finish up as much as I can here. This might have been the same day I put the panel in, but maybe not. It might be the following week. I forget. It's a couple of weeks old now already. Uh, the last couple of weeks of August, I do try to take it easy. Uh, I'm working. We don't take those days, those weeks off, uh, but... I'm so tired from the whole summer, and I feel like everybody here in America kind of just gives up at the end of August and either goes to the beach or takes that week off or takes a, a four or five day Labor Day weekend. And so uh, I also try to take it easy as much as I can. I still worked every day. Uh, I might not have worked as many as many hours as you might expect. Um, so that's one of the benefits of owning your own business is you know taking time off when you need it. And that's what we do here at the end of August, for sure. I've done that for a long time. I also like to take the day off after Thanksgiving, if I can. And uh, that's always a nice day. I didn't always have that day off when I worked for other contractors before going out on my own 14 years ago. All right, so here, as you can see there, I have attached a three-quarter inch piece of uh, flexible seal tight, car flex, most people call it. And I'm going to come into the back of the trough that's above the panel there. And I'm going to go into the top of the breaker box as a conduit for the generator wiring. So obviously, like everything else, I just do a rough fit. And then we get the final fit. And we've got to make sure we get our lock nuts in. And getting this uh, car flex into the top of the panel is not always simple. I have the middle of the panel open uh, with a knockout because I came into the back of that panel with my wiring. You don't always have that luxury of doing that. And as you can see, this whole panel is full with the surge protection and the generator wiring and every other thing that was existing. The panel is full and the panel, the main lug only panel to the left isn't full, but it's filling up. And so it's a 20 circuit panel. I think it's a 20 circuit panel and uh, there's already a few circuits in there. So there you have it. Um, I don't think it's wired up yet. It's still got some wiring up to do. But that's how we set up the, uh, the wiring trough. And so now I know this is exactly where it's going to go. I'll take this panel cover off and we'll get the wiring attached. Uh, and you see the watt meter that's on that cover. Eventually, the wiring for the generator wiring is going to go through those current transformers. And that's how it's going to read before it goes down to the generator breaker inside the main breaker panel here with the interlock i think what i did here is i may have 
I forget what I forget what I did here. Oh, what I'm doing here is I am making a knockout out of the sheetrock out of a hole that I drilled to get a connector in there, so that I could uh, bring the <clears throat> the antenna, uh, or rather the voltage sensing uh, cable that's coming from the power back that wraps around one of the main uh, service entrance conductors. It detects the magnetic field, and when the power returns. That's how that alarm sounds, lets you know that you can switch back and turn your generator off and switch back over to the utility power. So this antenna wire is just fished down the wall here. And then inside, I used one of the knockouts that you would normally use for the ground wire to come right through um, into the uh, panel enclosure here. And then you'll see in a little while here, I put a ground bar inside this wiring trough as well. So I can connect my generator wiring and the ground the equipment grounded conductor for the power back. The other thing I don't normally do is I don't normally, normally wear my Islander shirt to do the electrical work. I love my classic electric work shirts because they have a pocket. And I've been using a pocket t-shirt forever, at least since I've been in business. I used to... Not that I hated it. That's a strong word. I disliked when I got a work shirt from a company I had worked for that didn't have a pocket because I use the pocket all the time, especially for stuff like this. The panel cover screws. You don't want to lose those. and You always want to put the same amount back that you took out. And so sometimes you put them maybe up on a cabinet to the right like I have right there, which is what I would had to do here. But normally, I like to put them in that upper pocket right there. That's a good, safe place to keep screws that you cannot lose, especially panel cover screws. So there's your professional tip in this video. So there I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do here with this ground wire? I don't want to snake it through the wall. I am going to drill and tap a ground bar here inside the enclosure. Oh, and I also forgot to make a knockout for the, uh, for the generator wiring here. And so once I did that, I put the connector and I was able to access it through that hole I have cut out right there. And then I'm able to bring my generator wiring through the back of the, uh, the six inch trough here. And the generator wiring eventually goes to the box on my left right there, which goes to the outside. And then the inlet is on the outside out by the uh, meter or rather it's close to the garage side. So I don't have to open up my door that I use to uh, hide my garbage cans and my recycling bins. But this wire, I'll drill a hole here in a moment. This is 10-3. And so with 10 wire, you're able to get the full 30 amps at 240 volts, which will give you a battery. I'm sorry, not a battery. That'll give you a portable generator connection good for 7,200 watts. That's 7.2 kilowatts. Uh, it's simple mass, math. It's, it's Ohm's law. It's 30 times 240 volts gives you 7,200 watts of available electrical power from your standby generator or your portable generator, I should say. All right. Now, the generator that I have is a Generac. It's an electric start. Uh, I run it at least once a month to jog it. So when, it, when I need it, it's going to work. That's very important if you're going to put in a portable generator wiring system. When I do the standby generators, those those are programmed uh, automatically to turn on either once a week, um, every two weeks, or once a month. You can jog the, the generator. And it's very important that you do that manually with your portable generator because if you leave it there for a year or two because you didn't need it, it's probably not going to start when you need it. So always... Um, Start your generator at least once a month. Let it run for 10 minutes. Turn off the gasoline valve and let it run out of gasoline before it shuts off. Uh, so there's no uh, there's no gasoline in the carburetor. There might be a little bit left in there, and there might be a better way. Leave it in the comments if you know a better way to not leave old gasoline in your carburetor. Thank you. All right, so now once I get into this wiring trough with that 10-3, I'm going to transition uh, to some THHN. And I did some THHN in that car flex from the wiring trough into the main breaker panel here. And I'm, connect it, I'm going to connect it to a 30 amp double pole circuit breaker. Now, the other thing that's important about that double pole circuit breaker is that it's mechanically attached to the enclosure, which you'll see. I don't know if I showed it in this video, but there'll be another video 
on the portable generator wiring, uh, showing you exactly how to set it up. And it's going to be a comprehensive video. I'm trying to make a real, real good video for that. I have some ideas. I've been writing a small script, believe it or not. And uh, I think my wife is going to actually hold the camera so I could talk into the camera and give you that perspective as well. I want to make one of the best portable generator wiring videos there is on YouTube. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is I got the wiring trough with the watt meter um, attached to one of the holding screws on the trough. And what I need to do is join my wires, but I, more importantly, I need to get the current transformer around those conductors so they're able to measure the amount of current that I'm using, or the matter of, I'm sorry, the amount of wattage I'm using while I have the generator running. All right, and it's a good place to do it, to have that watt meters right by the panel here. So as you're turning those circuits on, you hear the generator dip, and then you'll know exactly how much power you're actually using because the watt meter is going to be right there in front of you as you're turning the circuit breakers on. Uh, so far, I really like how this has come out. Uh, I still have to do the upgrade to the meter on the outside and the riser. Uh, I have all the, I'm sorry, I'll have all the equipment delivered to my house tomorrow. This is Monday, September 5th when I'm recording this. And uh, I plan on doing the riser maybe on Saturday this week. I hope there's a 50% chance of rain. And so if it's raining, I'm not going to do it. Obviously, when you're cutting out live electricity and it's raining, that's not a good combination. Uh, but here you can see, I'm just attaching my number 10 THHN to my double pole 30 amp circuit breaker. And that's my generator main breaker inside this panel. And so the interlock prevents the generator breaker from being on at the same time the utility 208 main breaker is on. You can't have them both on the same time. It's mechanically impossible. That's what the interlock does. That's what the interlock accomplishes. And it's very important that you don't feed electrical power back onto the grid that the rest of the neighborhood is down because... If you do, then your neighbor is going to be able to turn his lights on. And the poor guy working on re making those repairs on the utility side might not know it's live and it could kill him. So that's why you need to have an interlock uh, to prevent that from happening. If you're interested at the NEC section that addresses the portable generator or the optional standby generator system, that's Article 702 of the National Electric Code. So I get a lot of questions about my pliers. I use those Klein 7-inch hybrid pliers. I actually uh, cut through some live wires the other day by accident, and I kind of ruined the pair that you see in this video. Uh, but I had another pair of 9-inch hybrid pliers. I'm using those now. They have a little bit more leverage for cutting larger wires. And I've been using the 7-inch for about two or three years. So going back to the 9-inch was a little bit of an adjustment. All right, so here I just want to tighten down my terminals on the double pole circuit breaker. And I'm just about done with this job. And you'll see here at the end, uh, I do manage to patch up most of the sheetrock that you see undone there. And I put a nice piece of paneling over the panel, or rather the panel covers are over the paneling. So I didn't have to go back and tape and spackle and finish the sheetrock. I put up a piece of paneling. I think it looks really, really nice. And uh, you'll see that momentarily. Hey, while you're here, if you're still watching, I appreciate you guys watching these videos to the end. It definitely helps uh, each month with revenue for my channel here. Uh, I try to give you guys the best video I can each time, and I my goal is to make each video better than the last one. Sometimes I miss that, I know, but I try. So if you like this video, thank you, and you're still watching, thank you. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe and the notification bell, and I thank you very much. Also, I have to say that we're getting to the end of the video here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you to all my longtime viewers who are coming up to 15,000 subscribers. It's a very exciting time. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.